Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Dolphin emulator to play Wii games and also GameCube games on your Mac. This is a 2025 setup video. This video does not condone piracy. It is for educational purposes only. So let's get straight into it. And first of all, what I want to show you is you can actually use a real Wii remote and actually use the sensing part of it. So like the motion, you know, using the pointing. To do that, you need a Wii sensor bar, but for USB, so you can connect it to your PC. Here's a little, you know, fact. The sensor bar doesn't transmit any signal, any data to the device, so to your PC or the Wii. All it did was by connecting it, got power to the infrared sensor bar, and that, you know, sent a signal to the remote, and then it was the remote that sent all of the, you know, see, you know, the data to your console or to your PC. So that's just a little thing to know. And as a result, people have used candles to effectively emulate that in like a real life fire candle. You could also, if you have a Wii, and for some reason you want to use, you want to emulate and maybe you want to get high res, save states, etc. You could have the, the sensor bar connected to your Wii, it powered on, and that would still work as well. Just a little bit of information for you. Next, you want to download the unarchiver.com. And on there, you can download it straight from the Mac App Store, or you can download it from the website itself. And this allows you to just extract files really easily without having uh, to, you know, you know, files that you can't actually extract using the built-in extraction tool. So once you have this, this will allow you to, you know, when you have games, sometimes they could be in a format that you can't extract. So get hold of this. Next, what you want to do is download the Dolphin emulator. Go to download, just click the latest download and it's macOS ARM slash Intel Universal. I've already got this downloaded and obviously you'll have to get the ROMs separately because if you Google Wii ROMs, you'll be, you'll be, there's plenty of links. And next, what I want to show you is the compatibility list. Honestly, compatibility is really good these days. So it's almost 70% are perfect. The playable one, for the most part, you know, you won't really have much issue. Uh, so you've almost got 99% compatibility, uh, which is fantastic. You can go to an individual game, let's say Quantum of Solace, and you go there, it will give you version compatibility testing and any known bugs as well. So if we close all this down, and now what you want to do is extract the file. So first of all, we have the .dmg file. You just double click this, drag that over to applications. You, we have our game, double click the game file. And so the game file is over here. Okay, so with this game file, you have a .wbfs, that's fine. Copy that. You want to go to Documents, ROMs, create a new folder called We paste it right here. And this allows you to organize your files. It's, this could be on a, an external drive. It could be internal. It just allows you to, you know, store it properly. Now you want to open up the Dolphin file. So if I click Dolphin, click Open, and it says you click No for that. Now let's set up a couple of things. So you want to go to Options, Graphic Settings, and in here for the back end you want Metal. On maybe a slightly older Mac you might not have the Metal option. You want to go Vulkan or OpenGL, but for the most part, Metal will give you the best performance. For adapter, make sure it's selected with Apple M if you have an M processor or Intel if you have a slightly older one. For aspect ratio, I'm gonna choose Auto. Some people like 16 by nine. It can squash and stretch it, but if you want that, click this. And as a result, you'll need a different setting later on as well. You can do V-Sync and this just, you know, ensures that it caps the frame rate, doesn't go too high. And uh, you can start in full screen. I like not to start in full screen. Do compile shaders before starting. This takes a bit of extra time when launching, but it means you just don't get stutters during the game. And in enhancements, the internal resolution, increasing this, you'll get you a better image, but depending on what type of computer, you know, the hardware you have, 
you might have drops in performance. So I recommend doing it on native, cleaning your performance depending on the game, and then increasing it from there. Aliasing this will you know smooth out the jagged edges. Again, this is a very you know impactful on performance. So I always recommend that you change it afterwards once you know that particular game is working well uh, with none for example that's my opinion texture filtering so anisotropic filtering uh, you know this is one we can change it to 60 i can put this to two as well because i know this will work well and i'll increase the resolution but anisotropic filtering it's at obscure angles sometimes the textures can look a bit blurry this helps this it's not a huge drain on performance i'll just you know usually ramp this up again same process applies do it without it then increase it if you did have 416 by 9 do the widescreen hack and honestly apart from that unless there's a specific you can show fps for example unless there's a specific enhancement that you need based on the compatibility guide you leave it as is now what we want to do is map our controllers you go to here you can do a gamecube controller it's very similar you go to you know, standard controller configure you put it in i'll show you the wii options and you can do emulate the Wii Bluetooth adapter. If you are doing a real remote with the bar, you got real Wii remote. Otherwise, you got emulated Wii remote, and you can use the keyboard and mouse. You can use the game controller such as Xbox, any connected devices. So Xbox would come up as like SDL X input here. If not, you know you have keyboard and mouse. And if you want to override the map, you can click this and press free. You'll put it back. You'll put it on to free now. Um, you know, you can emulate the motions, obviously that's the pointer, you can do the tilt as well, you can press something if I press T, so as you can see, that's emulating the motion for, uh, you know, tilting forward. And again, same with motion input, you can emulate all of this, obviously the best experience that you'll get because the amount of different, you know, motion inputs and simulations that you can do is the original Wii Remote, and I'll just click default. You can add a profile, type it in, click save. This is great for different users, different games, different genre of games. Click close. And everything else, like I said, you can leave as is unless you want a real balance board as well. Click close. And we can open up the game. But before we do that, you can also set the game directory. If I double click from these documents, click allow ROMs, we select that. The Wii game is right there. If you right click, you can you perform a system update. You can open the save folder if you want to delete saves. Uh, you can also, if you have different you know directories, you can see where the containing folder is. Go to the wiki page. And this will take you to that compatibility page. And if you click properties, you can change some you know settings specifically just for this game. And if I double click. You can see the pointer works fine. A and B was one and two, I believe. And then eh. let me change the controls. Uh, so left, let uh, we'll put this to A and B. Then it'll be easier to showcase. Close. There we go. Create a save file. And you can obviously go full screen as well. seem to want to select it when I'm pressing A. I can have a look at that after that might just be game specific. It'll just be some little thing in the controls. Plus I did change the controls whilst I was uh, you know got the game right that's also possibly why. And then I forgot you can also configure the extension as well. So the nunchuck um, but that, yeah, that is how you set up the Dolphin emulator on your Mac. Pretty easy to do. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message down in the comments below. And um, like I said, that's pretty much it. There's a save state as well. You can save state. 
and the load state afterwards is allow you to go back to that point directly in the game instead of relying on you know save functionality that's within the game and that's it if you have any questions also like i said comment down below i'll see you in the next one take care bye